you heard you've been working towards this moment for a long time, and uh, you know now it's finally here. I guess talk to me about what the emotions are like compared to a normal fight week. You know something of this magnitude. The emotions aren't too different from normal fight week. I'm not really putting too much extra pressure on myself. Fighting is a uh, is uh, stressful enough, if you will. So, um, not that I'm taking it easy or anything, I work hard regardless. And uh, I'm coming in there with the same self-belief, the same confidence, the same energy, BDE, that, uh, that I plan on uh, using to get the win. It feels like you've been on Israel's radar for a long time. I mean, did you kind of pay attention to that along the way? And did that, did that maybe give you some confidence along the journey up there that this guy was already looking at you? Uh, no. Uh, what other people do doesn't really, I don't allow it to affect me too much. It is um, intriguing to see, you know, the champ is, you know, picking and choosing his fights. And uh, whatever he sees is intriguing him. So uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's pretty interesting because uh, when I made my middleweight debut, debut and uh, we all know the, the, the dogs pissing and things like that, but what we don't know is that backstage, me and him actually came face to face and I introduced myself because I had been a fan of him already. We were fighting on the same card. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, so we came face to face and uh, I introduced myself to him and congratulated him on his fight because I got to watch his fight. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, it was kind of interesting, you know what I'm saying, because he was respectful, you know what I'm saying, but I felt like he was kind of sizing me up at the same time. And he even said that, uh, yeah, we'll see each other. And I'm like, oh, well, shit, if we do, I plan on having, uh, let's have a good-ass fight. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, he pretty much reaffirmed or, you know, reasserted that, uh, the fact that we will fight again. So, um it was pretty interesting that here we are now. We even took a picture with uh, Mike, the uh, post-fight ops guy. So we might be able to find that somewhere out there. So, uh, you know, this thing has been uh, brewing for quite a long time, way before the videos that we've seen out there and all that stuff. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm happy to be in this position. I'm happy to have the challenge that Israel is going to bring. Um, I expect it's going to bring a different level out of me, uh, and I plan on bringing a different level, you know, anyway. So uh, I'm excited, but I'm, but I'm more prepared than excited. That initial meeting, were you sizing him up too? No, no. I was uh, just giving my energy, you know what I'm saying, giving him the energy that uh, reciprocating the energy. From watching his fights, I learn a lot. I get entertainment, so I was just reciprocating. You know how fans do. But I wasn't like fanning out or anything. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I think a lot of people feel to beat Israel, it's got to be a dog fight, right? You can't necessarily try to go out technique him in there. Do you feel that way? Does this have to be a dog fight, you know, a dirty fight for you to get the win here? Um, It could be a clean fight if one could control that that uh, that tor torrential ocean of techniques that he's throwing at you, you know. So that's a tall order right there. That's a hard task to do, but it's possible, you know. And I don't need to throw as much techniques as he's throwing to me to make it work. So I plan on using all the right skills, all the right techniques to make the fight, so I can be the beneficiary of this exchange here, you know. So I can win. Um, yes, I will be employing techniques, but it, will, it won't be no tick for tack sort of thing. I'm not going to take technique for technique with this guy. Like I said before, I'm not trying to have a fight of the night with him. You know, I want to get a performance in the night. I want to go out there, handle my business, put my hands on him. If I could touch him once and put him asleep, that's perfect for me. You know, but uh, a fight's a fight. He's going to resist naturally, and I'm prepared for that. Like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more prepared for this fight than excited for all the other stuff that goes along with it. Last thing for me, I know you want to you know, put more on this fight than it's there, but champion of the world, I mean, what would that mean for you to be victorious on Saturday night? Um, another day in the office, man. Uh, I'm not like looking up at the idea of being this. I'm coming down and taking part in this. You know what I'm saying? I'm stepping up off of my throne to take part in this, to exchange with my, my people. You guys, everybody, 
with Israel. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's where I'm coming from. That's my perspective. I'm not, I'm here to, uh, well, anyway, that's it. Jared back here? here to your left. Jared back here, sorry. Back here. Oh, How you doing, you sir? Israel, obviously, confidence exudes off of him. He's a very confident guy, but he's even saying that this fight could look comparable to when Anderson Silva fought Forrest Griffin. So I'm curious your thoughts on that comment and just his confidence overall. I don't really think about what other people say, so I don't have any thoughts on what he said or what he's saying. My only thoughts on, on my, my only thoughts, my thoughts are only on what he's going to attempt to do Saturday night and what I'm going to do Saturday night. So there's a lot of people saying a lot of different things and uh, like damn near all of them are counting me out. So why, should, why do I even pay attention to what people say that's on the negative side of me getting my win? That doesn't serve me, that doesn't help me, that doesn't bring me any sort of joy. So. I'm not focusing on that. That doesn't hurt me. Those are just words floating out in the air. I'm not going to sit here and try to catch them like a guy with a, a butterfly net trying to catch, you know what I'm saying? No, no. They can sit out there and do their thing, and those words will eventually die, and I'm going to continue to thrive. You, you just mentioned that you feel like people are looking past you. They're, they're picking him to win. Is there something to that? Like I know you're not worried about what people say, but... Does it almost give you like a freeing feeling in a way? Does it take a little bit of pressure off knowing that most people for some reason expect you to come in here and just be the next title defense of a guy like Israel Adesanya? Do you feel like you're more overlooked than his other challengers? Um, well, he, Israel has garnered a lot of, a lot of clout or I don't, I can't think of the right word, but rightfully so. The man has been putting in work. He's been doing his thing and look good doing it. Um, but well, hold on, what, was it, what, was, what was the rest of that question again? Just you feeling like most people are picking against you. Do uh -huh. you feel like you are the most overlooked uh -oh. challenger he's faced okay. at this point? Uh, again, I'm not concerned with myself with how other people feel, what's about to happen Saturday night. I don't even want to comment on it. I'm not going to even contribute to that. So if anybody else has any questions about what somebody else said, you might want to, uh, you know, redo those questions right now. You got time. So I don't care what people say. I don't care what people do. As long as they ain't getting in my way of me doing my thing, we ain't got no problems. I just meant more like a, is it more of a freeing feeling knowing that, not that you care what people think, but is it more freeing for you? Is it not house money, but you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. takes a little bit of pressure off? I know exactly what you're saying. And I don't have any feelings, no emotions, no thoughts about it. I'm not going to contribute my energy to that bullshit. <laughs> so I refuse to even go there. Here, let me think about what they're thinking and the thing and the betting thing and blah, blah. No, I ain't got no time for that. I got a fight on my hands. And all my energy needs to go to, to that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I got professional obligations, which is why I'm here talking to y'all. But I'm going to tell you how I feel. So I'm not going to go, I mean, I know, I mean, I've been through this dance before, you know what I'm saying? People ask questions and they get the, and they, and they sort of like draw out answers, you know what I'm saying? So, um, no, you're going to draw out energy, you know, this is how I feel. So I don't give a damn what people say. I can care less. I couldn't care less what people say. So, um, as long as they ain't getting in my way, as long as what they're saying isn't affecting what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to fight a man. I'm trying to go home. Fair enough. I appreciate the honesty. Last thing for me, one thing you can control here is how this fight's going to play out. So what is the headline going to read on Saturday? Come on now. We all know this. Uh, there's only one outcome I envision. Nothing else outside of the uh, age-old quote and new. Jared, over here. Right here. Oh. Oh, what right. up, James? How you How's doing, it going? Brother? Good to see you. Um, you mentioned before about, you know, this is just another win for you, but the MMA lab, I believe the last UFC champion was Benson Henderson, someone I know you have a lot of respect for. What would it mean to be a champion representing that gym as just another champion from that gym? Um, for me, it means more energy to the pool of greatness that we're, we're all contributing to. We're all drawing from, contributing to it, and 
finding our own greatness in and outside of it. So uh, it's going to bring a whole lot of energy back to that pool. And on that same note, what's, what does it mean to share this card with Sean O'Malley and Brian Barbarena, who I know used to train with you as well? How cool is it to have them be a part of this card where you're headlining? You know, it's, there's nothing better than going to war with your brothers, right? So you know that, I mean, this is an individual sport, so I can't say it adds that sense of security and stuff, but uh, we, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty superficial at this point because I don't train with Suge, mm -hmm. right? And Brian left shortly after I moved here. Yeah, we did do some rounds, with, and Brian was like, a few of my heavyweight rounds when I first got to the lab. So, uh, but nonetheless, you know, these are still my brothers. Um, but again, my focus is uh, me fighting. They can't get in there and help me fight. They're not even fighting like me or fighting somebody like my opponent. So I can't really pull anything from them. Uh, only thing I can really pull from it is the martial artist aspect, you know, and the entertainment aspect. And just last one for me. I know you got to work a bit with Trayshawn Gore this camp. I know he came out and trained with you guys for a bit. How, uh, what did that add to this camp, getting to work with him? You know, it was good to have a, a very fresh, uh, a fresh look. And Trayshawn, of course, as we all know, is a, a part of the UFC roster now. He did, he uh, damn near won the uh, Ultimate Fighter, you know. Um, and uh, he's just a young kid, man, who's in here trying to learn as much as he can, you know. Uh, He's a big dude. It's like, you know, I'm, again, uh, I feel like these guys are the same size as me, but I feel like I'm, I'm smaller than them when I see these guys with all these fucking muscles and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> it was good work working with him. Um, he was very encouraging, you know what I'm saying? Nothing but good energy from him. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm very appreciative to have him contribute to this camp. Jared, just to the back here, to, to your left here. Yeah. Um, Israel's only loss in the UFC was to Jan Blakovic. Obviously, that was a division up. But do you pay much attention to his performance in that fight? Well, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> if a man is undefeated and he only has one loss on his record, is he, if he's – well, shit, that was kind of contradictory. But we all know the situation. Um, well, absolutely, yes. I, do, I did watch that. Um, that among his other fights – stuff to be taken from each and every one of those fights. I'm not going to sit here and say, he can be wrestled. You know, John proved it. You know, I, didn't, I don't need John to tell me that this man can be wrestled. He's a man. And wrestling is uh, attuned to wrestling other men. So, um, yeah, he can be wrestled. Uh, he can be punched, too. He can be kicked. He can be, you know, he can get it. Does that help you with your strategy going into this fight this Saturday? You know, to a certain degree, we all watch film and study and try to get uh, as much as we can out of it. But it's nothing I'm going to lean on big time to go in there and be like, yes, I saw this in the video, so this has to happen in the fight. I'm approaching this fight like I approach everything else. I'm not going to adopt somebody else's technique for the first time ever and then try to do it in a world championship fight. That's... That's not what we do as martial artists. We hone the skills that we already have. We are always trying to ingrain more, incorporate more. Um, but as far as the sport of mixed martial arts, you know, we have camps and we focus in on what we're going to do. And um, we've done that with great success this time. And I know it's going to be enough. And of course, you fought at you know, bigger weight classes before. Do you think that translates at all in terms of your strength advantage, perhaps, in this fight? It could possibly, you know, but, um, you know, there's smaller guys in my gym who are hard to wrestle or and hard to punch and hard to kick, you know, uh, like flyweight guys, you know. These guys are hard to get a hold of, and these guys are – and on top of that, I'm not trying to, like, knock them out, so there is some sort of a, a little bit of a pull there, if you will. But, uh, you know, I, I, I train with high intensity. Uh, I can train with high intensity, yet have a low impact. So um, there's no pussyfooting in there, even though I'm not trying to uh, incapacitate my training partner. So, Jared, um, right. Oh. Um, Jared, right here. <laughs> am I running out of time here? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Hey, Jared. No, it's, I don't know how to mic anymore. Hey there. How's it going? Um, just two very quickly, or one, whatever we got time for. Uh, after the second Whitaker Adesanya fight, there's a bit of a sentiment from some people that the division is starting to figure out Izzy, that there's so much tape study. I'm sure you're very confident in your game plan, but how much do you believe at all that the entire division is going to start narrowing this gap on Israel Adesanya? Um, I don't know. I'm not concerned myself with what everybody else is doing. And then second one, uh, the last time I think we heard people talk about the knockout threat against Izzy was Paulo Costa. Obviously, that turned out to be a very one-sided fight. What do you think when you kind of study that was the fatal flaw that Costa made in that fight? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, didn't he say he drank some wine the night before or something like that? I don't know. Dead sober for this one, then. Huh? You're going to be dead sober, then? Uh, yeah. As sober as I can be, I'm definitely not drinking wine. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. Yeah.